Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. A few weeks ago, I attended the Oregon Wood Turning Symposium. A lot of fine presentations in that symposium. One of those was Eric Lofstrom. Eric, by day, is a school teacher and by night a wood turner. So I think his teacher mode shows through in his presentations because he does an excellent job of explaining what he's doing and he has a lot of great ideas. So he got me excited again about multiple axis turnings. I came home and practiced a little with this style, a mushroom type uh, turning if you will. And then I tried to do one of the style that he demonstrated. Took me a couple of attempts, but finally I got one that he would, I think, call a flame. Now his get highly decorated and very quite nice. So if you go see his stuff, it's worth looking at. This is uh, a four axis turning, one center and three at 120 degrees. The axes are aligned. They're not offset as each one. That's a different style altogether too. And it is interesting to see, as he demonstrates, how the edges develop as you turn big beads and coves on the different axes. Then after I finished it, I also buffed it with a buffing system, and it turns out very, very nice. I need to do more of that and get more practice with the buffing. So let's make, according to his style, this flame multiple axis turning. I have a lot of this partially dry cedar from a large tree I cut down from my backyard. I sawed off a chunk and mounted it between centers. On the spindle end, I'm using a step drive center cone. I'm liking this drive center because the small teeth allow the wood to stop if I get too aggressive. The only downside is that I need to cinch up the tailstock a few times early on while roughing out. Following Eric's instructions, after roughing the wood, I marked a circle on each end at one half the radius, then marked 120 degree angles and labeled each A, B, or C to keep track. Then I mounted the wood into the first offset position at each end, and I'm off to turn the facet. I want this facet to be approximately one third of the circumference but accuracy is not critical. I'll start with a gouge to remove wood quickly. Then, after I have all the facets roughed, then I'll switch to a large skew. I want the smooth finish of the skew, but I'm not confident enough to do the whole thing with the skew. I made the mistake on previous attempts of tooling the facets all the way to the end. That cramped the positioning of the future offsets. I'll do better this time on this project. Then move to the next offset position and repeat. Then move to the third offset position and repeat. Now I'll switch to the skew to smooth out the facets. This is white knuckle turning. I'm not cutting deep enough to get a continuous surface clear around the wood. So it's really difficult to get a good surface. Catches are really annoying. Now I'll go back to one of the previous facets. I got a little smarter as I decided to cut a wide cove before smoothing out the whole facet. It makes more sense to not spend time smoothing a surface that I'll just cut away.
Finally, I cut a large bead on the remaining two facets. I want to expand the cut closer to the ends, but I fear that too much pressure now with the wood cut away will cause the wood to split along the short grain. This makes me wonder if I should glue a plywood round to both ends to take the pressure and add a little insurance with the wood like this cedar. Fortunately, I can still go back to any facet to refine the curves and smooth the surface. Now to address the ends of the blank on the bandsaw. I'll sneak up on the final cuts so that I don't overcut. It would be really tough to add wood back to the piece. Next I'll get even closer with the disc sander. Finally, I'll do all the finished sanding with a 3 inch disc on the drill press before finishing with shellac friction polish. The only problem is that I cannot develop any friction. I'll let the finish dry overnight. Finally, I set up my Beale buffing system on my lathe. One buff is Tripoli, the other is White Diamond, and the final is Carnuba Wax. I'm actually amazed at how much it polished up. And wow, I really like it. Nobody can claim it has any functionality other than to look good. Eric had another style he called Seattle Rain. I may have to try that one also. Eric does a lot of coloring. I'll leave that to a future project. I hope he sees this video so that he can tell me if I did it right. Meanwhile, I am happy with it. That's all for this video. Please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Please always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.